Hi, this is Dr. Martin, and in this brief video, I'll talk about the cardiac output. At the end of this video, you will be able to describe the cardiac output, stroke volume, and heart rate, know their normal values, explain the factors have effect on the cardiac output, and able to calculate the cardiac output, and learn what is the clinical significance of the cardiac output where we use in practice. Cardiac output is defined as the volume of blood being pumped by the heart per minute. Basically, it says in one minute, what is the volume of blood pumped by heart we call cardiac output. Cardiac output calculated by multiplying the stroke volume, which symbolized here with SV, by the heart rate symbolized with the HR. So we can calculate the CO or cardiac output and heart rate times stroke volume. What is the normal range? Normal range for cardiac output is about 4 to 8 liter per minute but it can vary depending on the body's metabolic needs. Look how big range, four to eight, almost double. Now, what are the factors affect the cardiac output before getting into it? And let's see the, the formula. We said in formula, cardiac output equal the uh, multiplying heart rate with the stroke volume. Let's discuss what is heart rate, what is the normal heart rate first. Heart rate is the number of the heartbeats per minute. Normal range is changing from 60 to 100 beat per minute, BPM, beat per minute. But the average normal uh, value of the heart rate for 70 kilogram male is 72 beat per minute. Okay, now when we look to the stroke volume, the volume of blood pumped from the heart per beat. What that means? When your heart beat or contracted one time, what is the volume uh, send the periphery in one beat? So how you can find this? How you can calculate this? Stroke volume calculated by subtracting the end of systolic volume from the end diastolic volume. What that means? Um, you know that in diastole, your ventricles fill with the blood. So in diastolic volume, that means your ventricle should have blood fill. When it's filled fully, that's called end diastolic volume, just before the, the contraction start. So end systolic volume is the, the your heart started contracting, contracted completely, and at the end of the contraction, what you have. So as you see, end diastolic volume is 120 milliliter. That means when your heart fully filled with the blood uh, and your ventricle, mostly the left ventricle, uh, has the 120 milliliter blood inside of it. And end systolic volume is 50 milliliter. What that mean? After the heart contracted, at the end of the contraction, you s your heart, your left ventricle still have 50 milliliter blood inside of it. It's not completely empty. So what is the difference? 70 milliliter. That means 70 milliliter of the blood filled each beat and went to the periphery. So that is your stroke volume. The normal unit of cardiac output is the liter per minute. If we have the, the heart rate 72 per minute, which is the normal heart rate, and that person has the uh, 70 milliliter stroke volume, the normal value of the cardiac output for that person is 5040 milliliter per minute. Since the unit has to be liter per minute, so average is 5 liter per minute. What that mean? That means that that person's heart uh, uh, sends the 5 liter volume of the blood for each minute. We said the normal range of cardiac output changes from 4 to 8 liter per minute. 
and it can be very depends on the body's metabolic needs so now we will see the what factor factors affect or change the cardiac output before going that notice the stroke volume is equal to subtracting the from the end diastolic volume to end systolic volume so you might need to know this to calculate uh, the stroke volume Cardiac output is primarily controlled by the oxygen requirement of tissues in the body. If your tissues needs more oxygen, you need to send more blood to the periphery, so your cardiac output has to be higher. So either your heart rate it should change or your stroke volume change or both needs to change to make a difference in the cardiac output. Let's focus on the fact some of the factors affect the heart rate autonomic innervations we know that sympathetic in innervation increase the heart rate and parasympathetic uh, innervation decrease the heart rate the hormones your thyroid hormones increase your metabolic rate if you have more you have higher metabolic rate higher heartbeat if you have lower than normal you have less heart rate and that will affect your cardiac output Fitness levels. We know that the your heart will beat less when you are have a good athletic body, and but it will be uh, beating more effectively, and it may beat even less than sixty per minute, but sending more blood to the periphery. So age will be affect on heart rate too, because by age your uh, um, your heart rate change by exercise uh, takes longer time it's slower to your heart rate will increase by exercise we know that exercise increase the your uh, heartbeat but when you aged it will take slower and you will not get as much as you were in your 20s and the factors affecting the stroke volume is the heart size we, we know that men on average have higher stroke volume than women due to the they have larger size of their hearts however stroke volume depends on several other factors the fitness levels as we talked before contractility duration of the contraction preload and afterload now what are the what is the preload preload is the degree of the myocardial distension prior to the contraction preload largely depends on the amount of the ventricular filling if you have more blood filling your ventricles and stretching the uh, myocardial uh, uh, cells or we, because we should say myocardium and you will have a stronger contraction so you have increase the force of contraction and when you increase the force of contraction you will increase the cardiac output afterload however is the force against the ventricle uh, contract the, and eject the uh, blood it's largely depend on the arterial blood pressure and vascular tonus by age if you have the uh, either aortic stenosis or some uh, uh, hardening of the your arteries and uh, your cardiac uh, output will change due to afterload change so afterload is the force against the ventricle act in order to eject the blood cardiac output is clinically significant because sufficient cardiac output helps to keep blood pressure at the levels needed to supply oxygen-rich blood to the brain and the other vital organs. The assessment of cardiac outputs is important in determining not only the uh, work of the heart or condition of the heart, but especially during sepsis when you are giving the vasodilator or inotropic medication to the to the, the person to uh, measure the effect of these medications i hope you learned and enjoy it have a good day